Yeah. This is Paul Green, the founder of the Paul Green Rock Academy. He is also the founder of the original School of Rock. What were we just looking at? You were looking at some videos of my uh, kids from Woodstock, New York, where I, I spent, I'm back in Philly now, but I lived in Woodstock for like really? five Did years. Really, did they? Ever have any people get together and play music in front of other people back in the day? Uh, they did. They did. They, they, they tried to do it in Woodstock, <laughs> but they lost their license a month before. Get and the here. actual Woodstock Festival was about an hour and a half away. So when you live in Woodstock, these like <laughs> middle aged tourists and middle aged is kind. Yes. Um, yes. With fanny packs are like, where was the festival? Oh, that like, is the best. That drive was. down this road for an hour and a half and make a left, you know? So. Is Yasgur's farm? Never mind. That's another yeah, farm. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I just dated myself. So uh, tell us about, first of all, explain the difference between the original School of Rock and the Paul Green Rock Academy. Excellent question. I uh, started School of Rock in 1998 as a senior at the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, I was on my way to law school. You're originally from Philly. Originally from Philly. Congratulations on the Super Bowl. Thank uh, you. We're a little bit past that, but congratulations. We all worked there. really hard to make that yes, happen. Yes, so. um, And School of Rock was founded in my living room in 1998, under my watch and with a couple partners and a lot of staff. What was the idea? Um, okay, so I'm teaching guitar in my living room. And I love teaching guitar. Most, most guitar players who teach do it begrudgingly, but I was the opposite. I liked teaching more than I liked loading equipment at 3 a.m. Right. So I really liked it, so I actually put my heart and soul in it, and I noticed, I noticed the, the most obvious fact, but kids who practiced got good at guitar. Amazing how that happens. Kids who didn't practice didn't get good. And more importantly for me, the kids who practiced were more fun to teach. So I started having the kids to motivate them to do jam sessions on the weekend. And they started getting so much better from just playing with each other mm. that I actually put on a show with them. And then I noticed like the, the secret to like, imagine being on a baseball team and never playing games. That's what music education was like before School of Rock. You just practiced. Just practice. And School of Rock said, okay, November 8th, you're playing a show. And it was the most amazing motivating factor because most of the kids worked really hard, got to that show, got a little of this, which is the most beautiful sound in the world. That's those hierarchy of needs. We need a little recognition. There you go, yeah. So, and the kids who didn't practice saw the kids who did. Wow. And decided not to make that mistake. And from that, my apartment, um, and, you know, until I left the company in 2010, we grew to 57 locations all across the country. Um, they're up to like 140 now. Wow. But uh, so I moved to Woodstock. I mean, I've been uh, up there for the last, it's funny you mentioned the Woodstock Festival with Michael Lang and Steve Vai and a couple other really great people. We've been working on a music college. A music college? Called Woodstock Music Lab, which is my long play. Right. And uh, while I was there, I missed teaching kids. So I started the Paul Green Rock Academy. It has a location up in Woodstock, and then, because I'm easily bored. Yes. I'm a little punk rock kid from Philly, from the yes. 80s. I said, you know, I said, what's the most punk rock thing I can do in my 40s? So I'm back in law school. Oh, well, but, but, and you, by the way, I heard you're back in Philly. I'm back in Philly. I've, I was accepted uh, to the Temple University Beasley School of Law. Good for you. Because I learned along the way, you know, I'm, a, I'm a both an entertainer and an entrepreneur. They need better lawyers. I wish, I, you know... I wish I would have known then what I know now as I was building and selling a company. That's so interesting. Nothing too regretful, but like, when you're, when you're doing deals, you're like, here's this thing that I don't want or need. I hear you. Oh, by the way, now I want or need it, you know? You know? You know so I'm fascinated by your, your experience <laughs> as an entrepreneur, your, your imagination, your vision, your passion for helping kids. Um, I'm also curious about your sense of music, appreciation or in public schools. Where is the place and is it becoming diminished, the commitment to educating kids around music? One um, other question I know. It go, it's cyclical. I believe the word is cyclical. It's um, close enough. Yeah. I don't correct people. Right now know. we're not in a very rock heavy world. But that was also true in the late 80s and the late 90s. Yeah. Then, you know, so, and then Nirvana changed everything in the 90s. Jane's Addiction before them. Yeah. And the White Stripes and the Strokes brought rock music back in the early 2000s. And, and you're starting to see it now. So right now, you know, I had this real this sort of, um, you know, awakening moment. The first day of law school, my contract professor asked every kid to send in their favorite or most important song in their life. And then he played a two-second loop of them. 60 kids, 60, 24-year-olds mostly. Only three of the songs were rock songs. That's it. It was all you're Beyonce. Hip -hop, and, yeah, hip-hop. Did pop. they know who you are? You know what? I went in and not telling them, but slowly but surely they figured it out. And You're the man. I thank you. <laughs> I don't know if they appreciate or understand it, but you are the man. Like you, 
You had a vision and you execute it. Yes. You may have regrets about some things you could have done differently if you had a better, whatever. But you did it. Thank you, Steve. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, um, yeah, so they've, 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 they've kind of figured it out. But law school game, like to most of the kids that I go to school with, I'm crazy Uncle Paul. <laughs> you know, and, and like when they're all stressed out, when, yeah. when they're all stressed out about, you know, the finals, I yeah. said, kids, I've had actual cases, you know, franchise cases argued in front of the Third Circuit Court of Appeals. You know, taking that's a pressure. Yeah, that's, that's pressure. pressure that would set our entire precedent for or our not being able to make payroll. That's pressure. <laughs> not that we understand that in public <laughs> broadcasting every two weeks. Uh, we get it. Listen, uh, Paul Green, the founder of the Paul Green uh, Rock Academy, the original, excuse me, the founder of the original School of Rock. Yeah. You have uh, making a difference to a lot of people every day, particularly young kids. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great job. You too. You made my job easy. <laughs> Thanks. Also brought to you by NJM and by the Russell Berry Foundation.